Hello, hello, Calvary. I am Pastor Sean, and I have your word for the day. Today's passage is Matthew 6, verses 19 through 24. It says this. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This can be a very harsh passage depending on how you look at it. There's no shortage of stuff in America, and that's just the truth. We always have an obsession with getting more stuff. The newest, the biggest, the most expensive, the more impressive. Cars, boats, campers, bikes, whatever it is. And honestly, I think that issue of obsession and stuff extends past that to things like titles, things like status, wealth, even comfort. Whatever our heart is capable of being obsessed with can be a treasure that we're storing here on earth. And for yourselves, you'll know what treasure you're storing up because it's what you think about the most. You give it the most brain space, or maybe you give it the most physical space in your house, or maybe you give it the biggest portion of your budget. It's almost like whatever this thing is that you are obsessing over is your master, and you a willing slave to it. So Jesus gives us two reasons why storing up treasure on earth is a bad thing. The first one is that it can be a waste of our time. If you're putting all of your time, money, energy into something Make sure it's worthwhile. Make sure it's a worthy investment. Jesus says all the stuff that the world has to offer is going to waste away. It's going to waste away. It's going to be gone someday. You can bet that's also true for titles and status and wealth and even comfort. So he says it's a waste of time and instead we should invest your time and energy and resource into something eternal, something that will never waste away, will never lose value or interest. That is your relationship with God, your faith, the character he calls you to. Basically, anything that God has to offer you or calls you to is more than a worthy investment for you. Because for those who believe in God and follow God, they will live forever with the things that are godly. The second reason he gives us for not storing up the treasure here on earth actually comes later in the passage. Jesus says this in verse 24. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other, you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Like I mentioned earlier, these things make us a slave to them. And there is no going around that. Your obsession reveals your masters. And the reason not to invest in worldly things and masters is because you can only serve one thing at a time. And if you're obsessing over money or relationship or status or things, you can't follow God with all of your heart like he tells us to in Mark 12. So what do we do? I'm sure you're already thinking of the things that your heart is overly obsessed with. In my understanding, there are only two things that can happen once you identify these treasure holds that are wasting away. Number one, God will cut them loose. You humbly approach God and tell him what you have been dividing your time and attention with, and you ask him to cut it loose. And he will. Often he does this by helping you be satisfied with where you're at in life, not needing approval from others, not needing the best and the newest things. But sometimes what God does, the second thing, is he redeems it. I have a friend who came to me one day and was talking about his obsession, guns. And he was telling me it was all he was thinking about. He wakes up and thinks guns. He goes to sleep and thinks guns. And it's all he wanted to do. And we talked and we came to a conclusion that God can actually redeem his obsession and use it for the kingdom. How? Well, you know what he's doing now? He's dedicating his time and his brain space to serving God with the knowledge of guns that he acquired over the years. He volunteers to protect the church, protect the youth. He is a protector and he, he puts God first in doing so. He has taken the talents and skills and obsessions he has and he's given them to God for him to use. The same can be true for you and your stuff. This verse isn't saying you can't have stuff. It's saying you don't put your stuff first in your life. Maybe God does want some of you to sell all of your stuff, sell all your possessions and follow me, give it away to the poor. Maybe God wants you to take a friend out on the boat that you just bought. Maybe he wants you to talk about him. Maybe he wants you to stop chasing titles at work and instead chase godly character. And maybe that title will come, maybe it won't. You're not worried about that. What's clear is that life isn't about the stuff. It's not about the worldly possessions. It can't be. It's about God. And this weekend, I pray God reveals what sort of masters you have in your life. And I pray he does two things. He either redeems it or he cuts it loose.
so you can focus 100% of your heart on him. I love you, Calvary. We'll see you guys tomorrow.